Hello, and welcome back to part two of section 2.1. In part two, we are going to look at differentiability and continuity. An alternate limit form of the derivative is useful when we're trying to look at the relationship between differentiability and continuity. And this alternate form looks very similar. Okay, and it tells us that the derivative of f is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c. And if you come over here and look at this graph to your right, you'll see that it's still the same thing. We're still looking at the limit of a secant line because I have this point of tangency and another point on my graph. Except now we're looking at the difference between your delta x is going to be x minus c and your delta y is going to be the f of x minus c. Now we can only take this limit if it truly exists. So if it, and we'll talk about a few cases later on where a limit will not exist or where the derivative will not exist. Now in order for this to work, the existence of a limit requires that the one-sided limits exists and are equal. So even though it didn't come through on the PowerPoint, we, I do want you to know that the one-sided limits have to exist and they must be equal. If the two one-sided limits don't equal one another or they don't exist, then it's not going to work. And just like when we were doing the limit, the left and right limits, these one-sided limits are called derivatives from the left and the right now. And like before, we say now are going to say that f is differentiable on the closed interval from a to b if it is differentiable on the open interval a to b and if the derivative from the right at A and from the left at B exist. We can also note that if a function is not continuous at a certain point C, then it's also not going to be differentiable at that point C. So it has to be continuous in order for it to be differentiable at a given point. And if you look at this greatest integer function, like if I want to look at x equals 0, which is right here, I see that my graph has a discontinuity. I'm going from here all the way up to here. So I'm not going to look at the differentiability or not going to be able to differentiate this function at x equals 0. Now you can do something, you, you'll be able to take the derivative between like 0 and 1 or 1 and 2, but you're not going to be able to do it at a specific integer because you have those discontinuities. And even though that differentiability will imply continuity, continuity does not necessarily mean that you can differentiate something. You can have a graph that is continuous, but does, is not, you're not going to be able to take the derivative of the function itself. Some examples of functions um, that would be either continuous and not have a derivative or just flat out doesn't have any derivative um, would be something like a graph that produces a corner right here. Oops. Okay. A corner would be something like the absolute value function because if you remember that graph is going to give you a v-shaped graph. So because of this corner right here and the fact that your slope is a negative value coming in from the left and a positive value coming in from the right, the two do not have the same slope or the same derivative. Therefore the derivative at this point here is not going to exist. You might also get something like a cusp. Now a cusp you can find if you graph the function x to the two-thirds power and this is going to give you something that kind of looks like this where it might be kind of arced from the left and the right comes to a point and then arcs back up. Vertical tangent something like y equals x to the one-third Okay, and that's going to be your typical function that looks like this, and it's kind of like a point of inflection where you're changing from a positive to a negative slope. Okay, or you will have um, graphs that give you just flat-out discontinuities, okay? And that would be something like y equals the absolute value of x divided by x. And that graph is going to look something like this, where you're coming in, you have an open circle here, open circle here, straight line. So you have a discontinuity right here. So at this point, you cannot take the derivative. So our last example says that the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 is continuous at x equals 2. Now, when we look at this function, 
I will agree with you 100% that we have a continuous function. Okay, there's no discontinuities. However, we cannot take the derivative of this graph because when you take the derivative or the limit, actually, let's just slide this all the way over here. When we take the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of the absolute value of x minus 2, we're going to see that the slope, which is really your derivative, is going to equal a negative 1 value. So as you're coming in from this direction here, we're going to get a negative 1. Now the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of the absolute value of x minus 2. So now we're coming in from the right here. This is going to give us a slope of a positive 1. So because my two derivatives or two slopes are not the same from the left and the right, this tells me that my function is not differentiable. And we do have a theorem that talks about differentiability implying continuity, and it just says that if f is differentiable at a point x equals c, then we can say that f is continuous. So we know that if we have a differentiable function, that the graph itself or the function itself has to be continuous at that point. And that's because differentiability does imply continuity. However, I want you to remember that continuity does not imply differentiability, and we just saw that in the last example where the absolute value function is continuous, but it is not differentiable. So with that, have a good night, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow in class. Thanks.